organizers for the invitation. Unfortunately, we cannot be there to enjoy uh, personally the meeting and uh, uh, the beautiful city of Kyiv. But while um, uh, other conferences were cancelled, uh, the organizers of this meeting were able to uh, <coughs> keep it online. Uh, so uh, this is really great. I I will talk about uh, a joint work with Mikola Kripchenko and Mayumi Makuta uh, in a project which we started with Mikola uh, some time ago. Uh, it is uh, about cohomology related to partial actions. So um, I would like to, uh, to give some definitions. First of all, what is a partial action? So let's have a, a group G and the set X, then a partial action theta of G on this set consists of uh, bijections between subsets uh, which satisfy two properties. The first one essentially says that if uh, you can, uh, the, the composition of this partial bijections theta H and theta G is the restriction of uh, the bijection related to uh, GH. Uh, what is the composition of partial bijections? Maybe you imagine, but in any case, I, I will tell you more in a minute. I will tell you in a minute. In, in, in a minute. But here, um, so if you can apply theta H to some X, and if you can apply theta G to the result, then we require that you uh, should be able to apply also theta GH, and the result is the same. Also, we require that the uh, partial bijection related to the identity element of the group is just a trivial bijection of the whole set. I will give some standard examples. Uh, um, the first one uh, is a flow. So, um, if any flow you can imagine, uh, it, it is going to be a partial action of uh, the real additive group of the real numbers by uh, time uh, passing, like imagine the, the, the wind blowing in Kiev and take a particle in Kiev, wait five minutes and assume that the particle is still in Kiev, then wait more three minutes and assume that the particle is still in Kiev. So uh, you, could be, you could wait eight minutes uh, in, uh, in the beginning and you will have the same result. So it's a partial action. Uh, another uh, standard example, is the um, projective linear group of two by two complex matrices act on the complex numbers by a Möbius transformation. So it's an easy exercise to check that it's really a partial action. Let me give a less a standard example, uh, which appeared in our paper with Rui Axel on uh, algebras related to subshifts. So let L be a, a finite alphabet, L, uh, lambda be a finite alphabet, lambda star, the free monoid, uh, based on lambda, in other words, all finite words, including the empty one, and consider the left shift map on sequences, uh, infinite sequences, from left to right, infinite sequences of uh, symbols from lambda, infinite words, and this uh, map just removes the first uh, symbol, the first letter. Um, uh, given a finite subset of finite, uh, sorry, given any uh, subset of finite words, um, we call them forbidden words, and we consider uh, the set X, uh, uh, which consists of all the infinite words X, such that no member of F occurs in X. So if, if you have an infinite word, uh, any segment of consecutive take any segment of consecutive word, any finite segment of consecutive symbols, it cannot belong to F. It cannot be a forbidden word. Uh, such sets is called subshift, uh, and it is uh, obviously a shift invariant. There is also a topological definition of subshifts, uh, but it is known that it's equivalent uh, to this one. So, um, example like take lambda be the English alphabet, and F consists of one single uh, word forbidden, it is war. So then the sequence, how are you? If you start a sequence asking how are you, it is forbidden. 
Well, instead you can start saying hello, and uh, so it, it will be a lot. <clears throat> okay, so I take a finite word and consider the, uh, consider the following set F sub alpha. Uh, it consists of all words, uh, infinite words y from the subshift, uh, such that you can put alpha as a prefix to it. Okay, it's allowed to do. So it generates a forbidden word. Uh, I also want to consider another set, uh, Z alpha, consisting of all infinite uh, sequences from X, which starts in alpha. Okay, so uh, considering, so the idea, our idea now is to, while well, shift map re remove the first symbol, whatever it is, our idea now is to remove a given uh, symbol, a fixed symbol. So uh, let F be the free group uh, with free base lambda. So these are words involving the letters and the inverses, including the empty word. Uh, take any symbol A and define theta A, uh, which just puts A as a prefix, okay, to Y. So Y has to belong to that set FA, and the result will be a word which starts in A, so the result belongs to Z sub A. We also defined it inverse map, uh, which will remove the symbol A whenever it is present, right? So the domain of this inverse is ZA naturally, and the range will be FA, so it removes the, um, uh, the first symbol. So it's the restriction of the shift map to this subset, to the subset of all infinite words starting at A. Now, take any uh, element of the free group uh, given in a reduced form. Uh, and uh, so a sequence of, of, of uh, symbols C1, C2, uh, so these are uh, uh, letters from the alphabet and the inverses, and define um, theta G as a composition of partial bijection. So of, obviously theta A and theta A inverse are partial bijections. By partial bijection, I mean bijection in subsets of a set. And here you take composition, and the composition you take of two bijections you take on the larger possible uh, uh, domain. Uh, on next slide, uh, slide I show it. So let me show and then come back. Um, so you, suppose you have, this is just general. Uh, suppose you have two partial bijections, phi and psi, and you want to, to, to construct the composition phi, uh, first phi, then psi. So you take the intersection of the range of phi, with the domain of psi, and then map back uh, by phi inverse. So this will be the domain of the composition, and uh, the range uh, will be uh, psi applied to this intersection in the middle. Okay, so this is the range. So this is the uh, known rule to um, uh, form the composition of partial bijections, which is uh, used. Uh, Okay, so let's come back to this slide. So uh, we defined theta G as the composition of these partial bijections. And then we can show that uh, um, uh, theta G, the, this collection of theta G is really a partial action. Uh, we call it standard and we used it to, um, to study uh, sister algebras related to partial, uh, to subshifts. Uh, defined initially by uh, Matsumoto, then modified uh, the definition with the help of Carlsen. So now we call them Carlsen Matsumoto sister algebras. Uh, so we used uh, uh, the theory of partial actions and partial representations to study the, these algebras with Excel. Okay, so uh, um, partial uh, actions are strongly related to a partial uh, homomorphism or partial representations. And uh, what are they? Um, so uh, let Ix be the symmetric inverse monoid of a set X. What is that? Uh, the symmetric inverse monoid consists of all uh, partial bijections of uh, the set X, uh, including the empty one. And the composition is the composition of partial bijections, which I defined previously. So this is, uh, a, a, an important object in semigroup theory. Um, I called it the, it's an inverse semigroup, and 
uh, by Wagner Presser theorem, any inverse semigroup uh, is can be seen as a sub semigroup of this one. So, um, given a partial action theta of G on X, uh, obviously theta G uh, are uh, bijections. So, um, theta G inverse denotes the, the domain, our usual notated notation, and D sub G denotes the range. So, we have really a map um, from G to the inverse monoid. And the question is, uh, what, what kind of maps define partial actions? This was answered by Rui Axel. One of the answers was given by Rui Axel in a paper published in 98 in Proceedings of AMS. Uh, so a map theta from G to the inverse monoid, to the symmetric inverse monoid, determines a partial action. It can only if we have follow the following three properties. It maps the identity element to the identity bijection. Um, it respects the product, but you have to have theta H inverse on the right hand side on the uh, on the uh, on the both sides of the equality or you have um theta g in but this is a consequence in this case uh so actually two properties okay and the third one will be a, a symmetric one a consequence so you have uh it respects the, the multiplication but you have a theta g inverse from the left on the both sides of of, of the equality so uh, these kinds of map are important for us. Uh, so if G is a group and A monoid, a map from G to A satisfying all of three is called a partial homomorphism. If A is an algebra, then we say that it is a partial representation. So in, in case of the inverse monoid, item three is a consequence of first two, but in, in general, it is not a consequence we require. Some applications of partial actions and partial representations. Uh, initially, uh, they appeared in the theory of operator algebras, uh, mainly by Rui Axel. So you have uh, several classes of, of sister algebras here. More recent uh, results are sister algebras associated to integral domains, sister algebras associated to dynamical systems of type MN. In algebra, we have applications to graded algebras, Hecke algebras, inverse semigroups, restriction semigroups, Levitas algebras, Steinberg algebras related to groupoids, um, algebras uh, and sister algebras related to separated graphs. This last one is a paper by Rui Excel and Pereira uh, with a, a very nice application also to paradoxical decomposition. So, um, they applied uh, partial actions uh, to, to study, to define and study sister algebras and also but, uh, answer the conjecture, an open conjecture on paradoxical decomposition in some topological setting. Uh, partial actions were introduced in uh, sister algebras to, to form more general cross products. Uh, so let me define it in algebraic context. So, um, uh, let me start this partial skew group ring. So we have a partial action of group on an algebra. If we have a partial action of a group on an algebra or on a, multiplica a multiplicative semigroup, then we require that the domains are two-sided ideals and the thetas, these partial bijections, are uh, actually isomorphism of rings of algebras or of semigroups. If in the, in the case of context of semigroups, these are isomorphism of multiplicative semigroups. Uh, then we can form what we call a partial skew group ring or um, a kind of semi product, uh, semi direct product of semi groups in the semi group case. Actually, I will use uh, the semi group case, but it appeared for algebras. So, uh, um, this uh, direct sum of copies or, or, or direct sum of these ideals, uh, this sub G, and the U sub G is just the formal symbol, it's the placeholder. So then you, um, in case of algebras, you add here the addition already defined uh, and multiplication by scholars, uh, uh, but the, multi the product of elements are defined this way. So in usual case, you would uh, like to act by theta G on, a, on B, but in partial case, you may not able to do that. But with this trick, you can do, because a theta inverse of A will map back um, uh, this element uh, to uh, D sub G inverse, 
this is an ideal. After multiplying by B, you remain in the ideal, so you are, you are able to apply theta G. And also there is a property which guarantees that this element is allowed to be here, so it belongs to the, this sub H. So this is an exercise um, to do, I mean, uh, but this is an important formula for us. Um, uh, theta G applied to this intersection, here uh, this sub G versus the domain, uh, this sub H is any other ideal, then the result is the range of theta G, uh, this, uh, this sub G intersected, with the ideal uh, whose index is multiplied from the left by G. This uh, actually will appear in, in some other definitions, so that's why I'm recalling that, but it also shows that this, uh, this definition makes sense. Um, in cross products, we just add something, uh, we multiply by something which is, uh, looks like a co-cycle, so it's a more general co-cycle. And uh, uh, the, the question was, is there a cohomology theory which would justify this, which would fit this definition of, of cross products? And, but let me, um, um, I, I, uh, I will proceed uh, on the next slide to more general definition, but um, uh, let me introduce the term. I will say that a partial action is unital if each ideal, this sub G, is a unital algebra, or in case of semigroups, is a monoid. Uh, so it is generated by a central, uh, by an idempotent central in A. Uh, so the more general definition is the twisted partial action, and this is used to construct these uh, cross products. It consists of ideals, D sub G of partial uh, isomorphisms, and uh, some elements F G H. Uh, we assume uh, so this is going to be a unital, the unital case. So uh, each ideal is a unital um, algebra or a monoid in the case if we work with semi, only semigroups uh, generated by central idempotence. Um, now each F is an invertible element of this intersection. Uh, you saw this intersection on previous slide. Then uh, theta one is the identity. D1 is the whole algebra, a whole semigroup. And this already we incorporate this property which you saw in the previous slide in the definition, it's convenient to be incorporated. And you have, uh, this equality is just in usual cross product, it holds. But uh, it's a normalizing conditions on F. Now I, you see that it's uh, one sub G, this is the idempotent generated, uh, generates the ideal D sub G. And this is the tuposycle-like property. It, uh, if you like it, uh, if you write down the, the tuposycle property multiplicatively and forget this uh, one uh, sub G inverse, so this is exactly looks like in the usual case. Now, in our case, theta G is not a, an automorphism, it's a partial isomorphism. So in order to guarantee that it is applicable to this FHT, you multiply by the generator of the domain of theta sub G. Um, after uh, defining, uh, so um, the, the question was what, what kind of cohomology theory we can define? And uh, it was done in a paper with uh, Mikola Hrebchenko, uh, published in, in 2015. Um, so uh, the idea replaced global actions, uh, usual G modules by partial G modules, which are partial actions of G. But uh, in our case, A is not a group, not an abelian group, it is a commutative monoid. And the reason it is not a group is simple because we, the, the domains are ideals and the group has no ideals, uh, non-trivial ideals. Okay, um, so this is a, a, a monoid and then we define uh, co-chains. So you saw a um, product of two ideals, now we generalize to n co-chains, so you have products of n ideals but this you have this accumulating products of elements x1, x1, x2, etc., x1 uh, to xn. Uh, so f x1, xn belongs to this, that is an invertible element of this ideal. 
uh, well, zero cochains is just the invertible elements of the algebra of or the monoid. And uh, uh, they form an abelian group by pointwise uh, multiplication. It has identity element, which maps x1, xn to the product, the generator of this ideal here. And inverses are taken in the corresponding ideals, which are unital now, so um, and um, invertible elements. Uh, so, what is the cohomology? How we define? So, we define the co-boundary operator in, in just almost the usual formula. If you write down the, the co-boundary operator in multiplicative form and forget that theta is a partial action of forget this one, uh, this I depoted here, you have just the, the, the formula, the usual formula. So in order to theta x1 be applicable to f x2, et cetera, be multiplied by this I depoted, by which guarantees that it will be in the domain. Okay, so then we can, uh, then we one verifies that the composition will be the corresponding identity element of delta n minus one and delta n, so delta n, so you can define, uh, take the kernel of delta n and the image of delta n minus one. So this will be the cosine, n partial cocycles and partial and co-boundaries. And uh, forming the quotient group, you get uh, the group of partial homologies. Okay. Uh, later, we, we recognize that we actually need a more general, uh, to do these extensions, I'm going to talk about extensions. We recognize that we, uh, we need a more general homology theory. So here we define multipliers. Um, this is known in ring theory, uh, known in semi-groups, so I, I will not stop too much on that, known in sister algebras. And the idea to replace uh, uh, for chains to, to let them to have uh, invertible elements in multipliers. Okay, there is some basic notions on inverse sem semigroups, um, very basic, so uh, I just put it here. Um, maybe uh, for many of uh, you it is known, so uh, an a semigroup is inverse if there is a unique inverse of this form, in this sense, it has a natural partial order. The important example, the, the symmetric inverse semigroup uh, and monoid and the, the partial order is just a restriction. Restricting the domain, you get a smaller uh, partial bijection. It has um, the minimal group con congruence. Um, actually, I, I put the definition of EU unitary, but I will not use. Uh, for us, it's important the similarities of groups, which is just disjoint union of groups. Uh, such that uh, they are multiplicable somehow, and AL times AM is in, in ALM. So L, capital L, is a semi-lattice. So these are disjoint union of groups indexed by a semi-lattice. So uh, I mentioned three papers we did with Mikola. First one, we defined the homology and so on, and in others, uh, we, started, uh, we studied extensions. And um, so there is a definition of what, it, what is an extension. Uh, it is just a sequence, it's a semi-group uh, with two maps. I is a monomorphism, a G is an epimorphism and uh, is this property. The image of A is just all elements which are mapped to one by J. It, um, so we have equivalence of extension, this is just usual definition. Here, me should be an isomorphism. Um, and uh, we, we need the concept of admissible uh, extension, but um, maybe I, I just skip it. I just say that it's related to inverse semigroup theory, uh, extension of inverse semigroups and uh, uh, a proposition says that any extension can fit into a longer extension, uh, can be refined by an inverse semigroup, and putting some condition on that, uh, uh, more precisely, we need an order preserving transfer cell for this rho, uh, for this pi, which is called rho, then, uh, then our extension is called to be admissible. And our result says, this is with Mikola, uh, 
that A be a similar list of groups and G group than any admissible extension. Uh, for any admissible extension, there is a twisted partial action so that oh, this extension is equivalent to the cross product semigroup. Okay, so cross product semigroups are admissible extensions, and we prove that any one is equivalent to this one. Um, so, uh, We, we define an extension of a partial G module, like a partial action. So it's just an extension such that it induces the, 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 the given partial actions on A. And we prove that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between equivalence classes of extensions and the second partial form, elements of the second partial, partial homology group. And we also characterize, uh, characterize split extensions and uh, um, the, uh, the equivalence classes of split extensions are in a one to one correspondence with the first partial homology. Now, our work with McCullough and Mayumi uh, deals with um, abstract, uh, with the interpretation of the third partial homology group. So, we have abstract kernel. Uh, so, we, uh, starting with the semi group S, we define as a submonoid of all partial um, isomorphism between ideals, okay? Uh, this can be shown this is a monoid, submonoid. Then we give a certain uh, uh, congruence on that. Uh, I don't have time too much to explain this congruence, um, but you ha have, may have a look on that. Um, and then we, we uh, take the quotient semi-group, this, this is going to be our, um, semi-group uh, zeta and uh, given an admissible extension we are able to, uh, to, to produce a partial homomorphism psi from g to this uh, quotient semi-group zeta and uh, uh, by an abstract kernel we mean just a, this kind of partial homomorphism so the question if we have a um, abstract kernel can we produce uh, um, an extension. In general, no, uh, like in groups, uh, right? So there is a way to produce a three cycle, this beta. I will not explain um, the details due to the lack of time of the construction of beta. It's just essentially um, taking representatives of psi g, psi g is a congruence class, and then produce a multiplier W with this, uh, which would be a candidate of, of these Ws will be candidates uh, for, uh, this is a misprint here, this inverse should be here, um, this inverse of WGH, sorry, this W inverse uh, should be removed and this WGH on the right should be this inverse. So these are candidates for our cycles, but they are only candidates in general because uh, this theorem uh, lemma says that this, uh, Equation one uh, shows up a factor beta, and then we prove that beta is um, a trico cycle, and this is called abstraction. So actually, we are also able to uh, produce a partial action on the center of A. A is non commutative now. And uh, one of our main results says that given an abstract kernel, uh, the center can be uh, uniquely regarded as a partial G module via this theta tilde. This is a restriction, a restriction of thetas uh, to the centers of these ideals. And um, uh, taking the cohomology class of an abstraction beta, uh, we have a well-defined element of the uh, third partial cohomology group. And the abstract kernel has an admissible extension in and of only if this abstraction is trivial in the homology. Uh, I will mention one more result. If an abstract kernel A has an admissible extension, then the set of equivalence classes of admissible extensions is in one to one correspondence with the elements of the second homology group with values in the center of A. Well, I see that my time is over. Uh, so, uh, last slide would, would have uh, some applications of partial cohomology. Uh, let me mention uh, one which is not by us, uh, as by Kennedy and Schaffhauser. They study reduced uh, sister, uh, in sister algebra theory, reduced cross products. And in order to understand ideals, 
the obstruction which uh, shows up is uh, actually a um, cycle of, from our partial homology. Okay, I thank you very much for the attention. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Remarks?